I'm just doing, gonna do a little follow-up video on my Drogue. Now I'm back in the UK um, and having used it last summer, um, I sent it back to Ocean Break to have um, some of the knots removed in exchange for splices. So the reason I have done that is because it was speculated that Susie Goodall, when she deployed hers in the Southern Ocean, it snapped at one of the, the knots. So here you can see Susie Goodall's um, first leader and the Flemish loop there, the knot, that technically should reduce the strength of that that um, that line by, I don't know, anywhere around. Flemish loop is about 25% reduction in strength. So you can see the um, just on the left of the knot there, it's parted. And then as the knot, after the knot, you can see the two lines going upwards, which form the actual loop, which then the two bridles are attached to. And the two bridles are still attached to that, as you'll see in a second as it pans up. Um, but, but yeah, so that technically, that knot is technically the weakest link in the system at the point at which it's, it's getting the most force. So you could say, okay, well, if that knot were removed and it was done with a splice, would the pitch pole have ever happened given that there would have been 25% of extra strength there? I mean, there were other things at play here. Maybe the weight on the end of the drogue wasn't quite correct and so it wasn't sinking in between. It's important that, that the, the drogue does sink well in between waves. Um, there was speculation that there might have been a bit of UV damage, and apparently um, Susie's boat was also at the top end of the spectrum for this size of drogue. Um, and I think it's a bit like anchors, you know, go for the one up if you can do with a drogue. The, the issue is um, that the, the drogue has lots and lots of cones all on different thicknesses of line all joined together the purpose of that is that the it doesn't need to be super thick right the way along because the forces change as you get further towards the end so it starts off being super thick changes in diameter all the way down to the last one which is what is that 11 mil or something um Anyway, in order to join those different thicknesses of lines together, um, they create loops at the end of, of them and join them with a hitch, basically a reef knot, a square knot together. Um, and in order to create that loop, you have to, um, or in order to create that loop, what they did originally was have a figure of eight knot to create this loop. And then on this side was the same, and then the two loops go together to make a reef knot. Now, the problem is with Susie Goodall, or so they say, is that the reef knot to create that loop, which they used to join the lines together, reduced the strength of the rope by up to 25% or so. Um, and that was therefore the weakest link. Um, so Ocean Break basically who make these drogues kindly said they would take it back and take that knot out and make a splice. There you go. So on this side, um, it's now got, what is that? Probably about a 35 to 40 centimeter splice um, straight on to create this loop so that we can make the hitch. Um, I haven't got one on the last leader. I've left this the same because it is the last length and there isn't a whole lot of force being put on this one or not enough to worry about the strength reduction um, really within that rope. Um, so I've had it done on the first two um, sections which will take a good deal of the force. So I'm just explaining it really because there will be a good deal of number of people out there that have drogues that are made from this type of line and still have these knots in in order to create the loop. And if you can um, have it have it removed and changed for a splice, you know, I mean, Susie Goodall was in extreme circumstances, but without any strength reduction in the line, and as long as your chain plates are good, then it should be able to stand up to anything. I mean, I don't know what else was going on there, and there might be other um, other things at play, but um, 
a large breaking wave, a, a sudden shock load. I don't know, maybe her weight on the end wasn't wasn't sufficient to create that kind of gentle breaking motion that you get from a drogue as it sinks and then rises to the surface again, I don't know, but um, either way, I just thought I'd kind of show what Ocean Break has done there. Now, I believe that new a new um, um, drogue would be done all with splices from different thicknesses of line all joined together. So you wouldn't have to worry with a new one. Um, just one that is, is made with different diameters of lines going together. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Um, whilst I'm doing this, I just thought I'd show you how I do it. I mean, it's quite obvious, but... So the last thing to come out of the bag when you deploy it is going to be the bridles so and I like to have the bridles attached before I even go I don't want to be having to bundle it all out into the cockpit and then deploy it I want it to come straight out of the bag so the bridles and their attachments are here which are over my shoulder and that then needs to go to the bottom of the bag because that's where it starts and then it all comes out and eventually ends up where the chain is and the last the tail which will then be thrown out and eventually the last thing to come out will be the two leaders I mean the two bridles so in a, what I do is I, I chuck that bearing leave enough spare that I can get them to the chain plates and attach them but I, I run them down the corner of the bag here nice and smooth so that when I'm paying in the rest of the drogue it, it goes in and doesn't go inside or get tied up or snag these bridles just keep it nice and tight down the side and you can keep it you can ensure that nothing's going inside it so when it does deploy the, the rest of it will just fly out and the last thing to come out cleanly will be the two bridles and then and then it should sit nicely um, I don't know maybe that's obvious but I think it's worth noting given that once you deploy it you want it to be completely hands-off you don't want it to having to be paying it out or worrying whether there's something you want to just basically deploy it and just stand back and let it do its thing.